Hello, I'm Lewis and welcome to DIY Machines, the channel where I share with you step by step how to make your own 3D printable projects. Today, we're going to go over how to build these awesome desktop neon signs. Powerable by USB or AA batteries, they are also dimmable to help create the right level of ambiance for any setting. Use it to help illuminate a room or dial it down for a more subtle addition to your decor. As for customizing, you can print the parts in any rigid filament color, like this glow in the dark cactus, which keeps going when the lights are out. Or this two tone lush leaf printed with 3D Jake's metallic emerald magic PLA. It's also your choice as to which color of LED neon effect strips you use in your design. There are several ready-made neon shapes ready for you to download and print, and I'll be adding more soon. And if you're comfortable, you can edit my designs and create a shape that's totally unique, either as a treat for yourself or as a thoughtful gift for someone else. For moi? Sure. Un bleu. This video has been sponsored by PCBWay. I'll tell you some more about their services later on. These desktop neon signs are a relatively simple project, so you can 3D print and assemble yours in just one or two days. You'll find a link to all of these items down in the description below. But put simply, you're going to need some LED neon effect strips, two resistors, two capacitors, and two switching diodes, a toggle switch, a female USB socket, one rotary potentiometer, a 555 timer, a MOSFET transistor, six bolts, and four AA battery holders, and some 3D printing filament. Now, I've designed this custom PCB to make wiring the bits in your project together incredibly simple. If you want to buy one of these, you'll find a link down below in the description. If not, You'll also find a link to the circuit diagram for the electronics, so you can assemble yours onto a piece of perforated board or similar. You'll also find a link to my Etsy shop, where I've put together a kit, which includes all of the components you need to build your own. You'll just need to provide the 3D printed parts. Every kit sold helps fund the next project on this channel, so thanks. Let's get started with the 3D printing. The first part to print is the neon shape itself. I printed mine in 3D JX Ultra Satin Gold. Once your shape is printed, we can measure out the LEDs and cut them to size. On my pineapple, I'm going to use two colors, yellow and green, and I want them to switch where the pineapple turns to leaves and then back again. To do this, press your first color into the shape, like so. and then you'll know where you want to make your cut. Now you can't cut these LEDs in just any old place. Along the length of the strip, you'll see these little dark markings, which mark out where the copper pads are, which we will solder our wires to. Whenever you make a cut for your LEDs, ensure you cut as carefully through the middle of these as possible, like so. We can then measure out the green and the remaining yellow in the same fashion. Once you've done that, you can then remove the strips from inside your shape. We're going to need to connect a pair of wires to each of the strips of our LEDs. Now it doesn't matter which end you connect the wires to, but you do need to pay attention to the positive and negative wires. To help me, I'm using two different colors of wire, red for the positive and gray for the negative. The positive wire is the one which is furthest away from the colored front of your LED strips. Before we can connect these pads though, it will be useful to use some flush cutters or scissors to reveal some more of the copper pads. For each of your LED strips, you're going to need to prepare a length of wire long enough to go around the rest of the LED shape and carry on 12 more centimeters out of the bottom. For example, in the pineapple, my green strip is going around this top section, 
so my wire will need to continue on from here, round the shape and another 12 centimeters out below. You should go through the effort of tinning one end of the wires by adding some solder and doing the same to the pads on the LED strips. You'll find that this makes connecting the two together far more successful. Don't forget to pay correct attention to the positive and negative wiring. Once you have done this for all of your LED strips, we can reinsert them back into our 3D printed shape. I started with the green at the top so that I could thread its wires beneath one of the two yellow halves. We can then 3D print the two halves of our base. Again, I've printed mine in the Ultra Satin Gold PLA. I've designed the base to be printed in two parts so that we don't need to waste material or time on printing some support structures for our prints. Start assembling the base by pre-inserting the two M3x8 bolts. The top piece then sits on here and then the shape is inserted from on top. You can then tighten these two bolts to secure everything together. Well, this project is taking shape extremely quickly and next we're going to work on the electronics to power the neon sign itself. But quickly before we do that, I want to express my gratitude to my Patreons. That's this lovely list of people passing by now. With your support, I'm able to design, document and share projects just like this one. Thank you. I'd also like to thank 3D Jake for providing me with some filament and PCB Way for providing the PCBs. If you can and would like to consider supporting projects like this on this channel, then please have a look at my Patreon page You'll find a link to it down below this video. Now, as mentioned at the beginning of this video, I've designed a PCB, which is what I will be using to assemble the electronics. If you'd like to build your own circuit, then you can have a look at the wiring diagram found in the links below. I have tried to label the PCB so that it is obvious where each of the components should go. Some of the parts may fit in more than one orientation and it doesn't matter, but for some of the components, it does matter, so I will step you through them now one by one as we go through them together. We'll start with the least tall of our components, the 555 timer, and work our way up in heights. This will make it easier for us to lay our PCB down on the surface as we're soldering them from the underside. You will definitely still find having a pair of helping hands to hand useful. First up is the 555 timer. Now you'll see on the chip, if you look carefully, a small semicircle marking at one end. I've drawn the same again on the PCB. Match these two up, insert the legs, and then it's just a case of turning over the PCB and soldering the legs from the reverse side. After the timer, we'll add our USB connector. This and all of the components in this project will be inserted on the top side and soldered from beneath. These big holes are used to hold it firmly in place, whilst the five little pins are the data and power pins. We only need power from our connector, so only need to solder the two small pins with pads at the back here. This time we will fit six components to our board before we do the flip and solder again. First up are the resistors, these simply fit inside their marked slots, the orientation doesn't matter. After this are our two capacitors. Now you'll find on these a white stripe and a shorter pin on the side of the negative leg. On the PCB, I've put a little minus sign to show you which side this leg should pass through. Push these through as well and widen their legs on the reverse side so that they are held into place for now. Following this, you should install the two diodes. Again, the orientation of these parts does matter. If you have a look carefully on the diode, you'll see a small thick black band running around at one end. This needs to go on the same side as the band shown on the PCB. 
Be careful because the two diodes have this band on opposite ends on the PCB. Once you've added these six, flip the board again and solder the legs. You can then carefully trim these with some flush cutters. Be sure to protect your eyes whilst trimming the legs as these sharp pieces are likely to travel further and faster than you would expect. Next up are our four optional battery holders. You'll need to ensure that the polarity on their plastic housing matches that as shown on the PCB. Solder these in place from beneath and trim the legs again. The transistor's large metal back should be facing the batteries when it is inserted. Flip, solder and then trim the legs. The dial on our potentiometer should be facing towards the outside of our PCB. Flip, solder. The last component is our toggle switch. This can be inserted in any orientation that fits. We can now add the wires that we've already attached to our LED strips to their correct point on our PCB board. This is as simple as connecting all our positive LED wires to this group of positive through holes and the negative wires to any of these negative through holes. There are five of each to give you plenty depending on how many colour changes you've put in your shape. You don't need to use all of them and it doesn't matter if you use the larger or the smaller holes. Let's pop in some batteries and test that all our electronics work fine before we begin to secure our PCB inside the rest of the project. Now the toggle switch has three positions. In the center position, it'll always be turned off. Pushing it towards the back connects the battery power and moving it towards the front will connect the USB power. Once you've turned yours on to check the LEDs are working fine, test the dial and it should adjust the brightness. Excellent. Use your last four M3x8 bolts to secure the PCB to the underside of the housing. After this, we simply need to add the toggle switch cover and then it's project complete. As mentioned earlier, I've designed a PCB for this project and PCBWay are making it easy and low cost to order some of your own if you'd like. I'll show you how. In the description below is a link to where you can order this design direct from the projects page on PCBWay's website. I've already preloaded all of the design and settings for you. If you're a new customer to PCBWay, they also have a promotion where you can get $5 towards your first order and as a set of five PCBs for this project only costs $5 at the moment, you effectively only need to pay for the shipping. If you're not in a hurry, they have delivery options starting from as little as $5. Or if you do want them a bit quicker, choose their DHL Express delivery service. I ordered some custom PCBs on a Sunday evening once and had them on my desk by Thursday. 
That's pretty impressive. If you have enjoyed this project, then please consider subscribing and liking this video. It really does help me out an awful lot. And if you've liked these, then you'll probably also like my GeoLeaf project or my giant hidden shelf edge clock. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below letting me know what other shapes you might like to see added to the collection. Thank you so much for watching through to the end of this video. Until next time, take care, do some good, and ciao for now. Our LED strips to the correct points on our USB board. Your PCB. Damn it. <laughs>